It may be snowy and cold here in Ottawa, but the temperature inside Parliament Hill is heating up ahead of Mon MPs returning on Monday. Let's build an economy that works for all Canadians, and let's build a Canada where people thrive and where future generations will directly benefit from us having chosen to meet this moment. Let me tell you something, Justin. You told us that better was always possible, and yet everything is worse, and you blame everyone else. That promise that the Prime Minister made was years ago, and he still hasn't delivered on it. And we're seeing the impacts of that. People are not getting the care they need. Here is where things stand for the parties, according to a new Leger poll. The Liberals and Conservatives are neck and neck, with the NDP trailing in third. Ashanti Curl is president of the Angus Reid Institute. She's in Vancouver. And in Ottawa, Eric Grenier is the writer and publisher of the writ.ca. Eric, I'm going to start with you. Give us the lay of the land. Who's up, who's down as MPs return to Ottawa? Honestly, I'm not sure if anybody is all that up or all that down. Uh, some of the polls that we've seen over the last little while, we haven't seen a huge amount uh, since the holidays, but the ones we have seen have either the Conservatives ahead by a few points over the Liberals or more or less a tie. There was a poll that was cut out today by Leger that had both the Liberals and the Conservatives at 34% apiece. So we're really not seeing anything that's all that different from where things were at the election in 2021. Now, obviously, the players are a lot different. Justin Trudeau's own personal numbers have gotten worse uh, over the last you know year and a half. And Pierre Poiliev's numbers aren't really that good for a new leader. We're not seeing any sort of honeymoon bump for Pierre Poiliev. Uh, so it is a little bit status quo. And I think both Justin Trudeau and Pierre Poiliev are going to be looking at uh, how they're going to stack up against each other over the course of the next 12 months. Uh, Shachi, what are the biggest concerns of Canadians in this moment? Couple guesses, Katie. Cost of living, cost of living, cost of living, and healthcare, 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 as it ever was. So those two issues show no signs of abating or going away. Now you've got some added challenges into the mix around uh, how Western Canada and oil dependent industries uh, deal with and communities deal with uh, what, what we're seeing in terms of the transition, the so-called just transition. Healthcare continues to be a massive issue with nearly two thirds of Canadians saying they don't have confidence in the system that they think uh, if they needed care in a timely way or if a loved one needed care in a timely way, they just wouldn't receive it. Uh, and cost of living continues to dominate with, with almost 90% of Canadians saying that they are already doing things to cut back, to ease discretionary spending, to find efficiencies within their own household budget. So it's against that backdrop that you see a return to Parliament that continues to be, you know, the whole will it, won't it, will we see an election this year? And if we're not, suppose we start with the we're not going to see an election. What the, the following weeks, months, half a year, half term, call it whatever you will, will offer is an opportunity for Pierre Polyev to maybe make himself a little bit more likable to really significant demographics of Canadian voters, namely women and people in Quebec, uh, for Justin Trudeau to maybe deal with some of the uh, challenges that he's been dealing with in terms of his own popularity, including the fatigue factor and basically what's his political future. And for Jagmeet Singh, it's, it's about trying to continue to make the case that he's relevant now that he's a junior partner and the NDP is a junior partner in this confidence and supply agreement, which has been going on for quite some time. And with, I think, at times some of the confused messaging we've heard from Jagmeet Singh uh, around health care, on one hand saying, well, he's going to die on any hill if it's not all publicly funded, but also being a part of some agreements uh, that, that really direct dollars to, to private care operators. Um, and part of that, I, I suspect that is going to be a, a major focus for so many uh, so, so many conversations in Ottawa. It's going to be about looking ahead to those health care talks with the provinces and, and the way that the federal government reacts to more provinces trying to expand services that are, that are offered through private clinics and following, tracking the NDP reaction through that and how that plays out. Uh, Eric, today, both Pierre Polyev and Justin Trudeau spoke to their caucuses, giving us a preview of the, the tone and and. and and what the next few weeks will feel like. What are you expecting in terms of themes and tones that we should be watching for? 
Well, tone, I think, is going to be uh, the key one. We're going to see if there's going to be a change in tone from Pierre Poilievre. I don't think there's going to be, based on what we've seen on his social media videos and that kind of thing. We're seeing Justin Trudeau going after uh, Pierre Poilievre a little bit more than we had before. Uh, so it doesn't seem like the tone is going to improve between the two of them. Uh, and I don't think that's a good thing for Canadians. I don't think they generally like to see their leaders going after them uh, in that kind of way. Uh, but the healthcare debate, I think, is going to be a really interesting one because it's pretty dynamic and, and tricky for all of the leaders. Because as, as Shachi just said, uh, Jagmeet Singh has to balance not wanting to inadvertently defeat the government, because the NDP doesn't want an election, uh, but also standing up for healthcare, which is one of their key platforms. But then for Pierre Poilievre, you know, he's going to have uh, conservative premiers, Daniel Smith, Doug Ford, coming out with things that he might not want to have to defend. If we think about the last election campaign, Aaron O'Toole had to uh, make the case that he wasn't for private health care. It wasn't one of the big issues of that campaign, but it was one of those that weakened uh, Aaron O'Toole and, and the people, whether people trusted him or not. So I, I'm not sure if Pierre Poilievre really wants to talk about that all that much. So how all of the leaders are going to balance that discussion over the next few months, I think is really going to be key. Uh, Shachi, we know that the tone is becoming more combative and that the return question period, at least, will be quite spicy. Um, that is at least the expectation here. Generally, how have Canadians responded when the tone in Ottawa is combative? Do Canadians think that that's effective? I think it, it's important to remember that what what most people consume is not, they're not newsflash. They're not watching question period in real time the way you we are. You don't say. But, but you know, they, they see the clips. They see yeah. the clips on social media. They see the news coverage. They're, they're reading the pieces. We're at a place right now where the level of division politically is so breathtaking and profound. And, and I come back to this one reference point uh, from some polling that we did late last year. Nothing's changed on this, by the way. I'd be gobsmacked if it had. Where the things that conservative voters dislike about Justin Trudeau are exactly, exactly the same things that liberal voters dislike about Pierre Poilievre. Both of them, in both bases, liberals see Mr. Poiliev to be arrogant, uninspiring, out of touch, rude, et cetera, et cetera. Conservative voters think exactly the same thing about Justin Trudeau. And what we started to see at the beginning, almost exactly a year ago, the real uh, playing on divisions around the time of the convoy and, and the way that played out politically, the way that played out in terms of communication and the real failure of either leader to do anything to reach across the divide at any point. And, and just for the sake of giggles, just say, hey, other side, I hear you, I see you, I get that you might not be happy. Neither of them did it. In fact, they both actively did quite the opposite. And we we are where we are. And, you know, Eric talks to some of those recent Leger numbers. These are numbers that, we, that we've seen that are consistent with other polling. Um, the reason you've got both major party bases in more or less a tie with no obvious advantage is because you now have two leaders and two party structures that are so focused on speaking only to their own base that you really have to wonder if they've got any ability whatsoever to reach across that divide, or is it just now counting on the political math that goes riding by riding, urban center by urban center, demographic by demographic, and just adding up the math that way? Eric, what is the one thing you're going to be watching for when MPs return? Well, I do think it is going to be this matchup between uh, Justin Trudeau and Pierre Poilievre because that is, as Shachi said, it is pretty much the you know the prize fight between the two of them right now in terms of uh, trying to get just that extra little bit of space in in the polls. Now, I don't think that we're going to have an election this year. I'm not someone who believes that is something that's near. And I don't think anybody really has an incentive to have one. I think the Liberals could use a couple more years to uh, see if the economy is going to get better. The Conservatives could use a little more years for Pierre Poilievre to get better known. And the NDP, again, they have a lot of influence right now. They don't want to waste it. So I'm going to see uh, just how they can all manage to try to make their points, try to make it seem like they're ready to go for an election, just because that's seemingly how you get dollars in from donors and that kind of thing. Uh, but all of them at the same time, not wanting to find themselves in an election in the next few months. I don't think anybody wants that. Uh, and they don't want to inadvertently find themselves going to the polls uh, in 2023. Shachi, what's the one thing you're looking for? 
Only um, one. You can I'm only pick one. To see, <laughs> I'm curious to see if there's any shift in tone at all. I don't expect it. Uh, I will fall off this roly chair if it happens, but but if it does, I'll send a sem selfie of myself on the floor, like <laughs> jaw slack. <laughs> Safety first. Okay, Shachi. Shachi, Eric, thank you both so much for your thoughts, and I appreciate it. Have a great weekend, guys. All right, Thanks. you too. Bye, Eric.